Another campfire chat here at camp. No, we're not sitting in a campfire, obviously. This is John. And this is Chip. And over here at my right, we have Gary Morrison. Hi. And Gary's been involved with camp as staff and volunteer for how many years now, Gary? How long have you been here? Around 30, I think. Around 30 years. And uh, a school teacher before that, am yes. I right? Yeah. So Gary has been very generous with his time at camp. And you may have seen him on the lawnmower. You may have seen him behind a telescope. Um, has a lot of the history of the area and a lot of information that that we would like to share with you all. And why are we in this spot today, gentlemen? Because there's water out in the middle of a pasture. And, and how did it get here? Yes, and this is a spatial feature. It's here because this area we're standing on has never been plowed. And the, where I got that information was from the owner of this when he was a boy. Uh, he was here and it was a century farm. So it's been under his family's ownership all this time. And he told me that this whole general area was never plowed. As a result, some of the artifacts of nature, as well as Native Americans, is really quite pronounced. And behind John and myself is a puddle of water on top of a ridge. And that puddle of water is, if you look carefully, you will see that there's a high surrounding area that even makes it look different. This, I feel very positive, is a remains of a buffalo wallow that probably dates back to buffalo times, uh, about the time this area was being inhabited. Uh, the buffaloes uh, used this and wallowed in it and it was for health reasons I think mostly. And I'm su suspicious that this could very well be one of the most well-preserved buffalo wallows in the state. And do you think some of that is because of the no plowing in the agriculture? Absolutely because no plowing on it. There have been seeding of crops and things like this, but where a plow did not uh, turn the soil over, it, it would have filled these in and they would have even tried to fill them in to make it better for cropland. Yeah, if we think about Iowa, we think about prairie and agriculture and, and uh, a lot of the prairie is getting turned into farmland here. Right. Yeah. Uh, the uh, one generation ahead of my age would have still been in this area when Native Americans uh, would occasionally visit. They weren't popular at that time, and they were kind of uh, picked on a little bit by locals, but it is something that uh, uh, people remember seeing them, and they would even make the newspaper. Some of them would be walking through town and stuff like that. And you said there was uh track of some kind? The, uh, another thing that's preserved in this unplowed area is the remains of an old trail that was used by wagons, perhaps stagecoach, and it basically came from the Osceola area uh, all the way down across the top of this ridge and uh, on down past they came off the ridge in several different places, and their object was, was to get across Squaw Creek. Squaw Creek was uh, in the valley directly west of this campground, and in ancient times, it may have been not possible to cross it in the summertime because of, of uh, water, dams and things and so they had to get to a crossing place below where that water was standing. I've been told that in these times the tops of the prairie, the hills were prairie, not tree covered. The sides of the hills were tree covered and so um, it's just different but all of this happens in just a few generations. 
faster than we imagined. Um. Okay, so we're standing up here beside the Native American mound, and over there we see Gary. He is standing by the buffalo wallow. And then we're going to pan just a little bit to the left, nice and slow, and we'll come across the pond. We'll see the John Woods farm, the windmill, the granary barn, uh, the animal shelter, and a far, far background above that. We can see main camp, and then we have the John Woods house, and behind that we have the Barnum Equestrian Center. That sort of gives you an idea of where we're at right now. Good. Hi, this is the site of the Native American Mound. And John and I are here to just show you what some of the features on this mound are. The mound has the trail that we're standing in right now that went around this side of it, but it appears that the mound had uh, two other trails going right through its center. John's now on a ridge closest to the edge. Now he'll step back about three steps, and those are John's size steps, by the way. <laughs> and he's in a low spot, looks like a trail. And now he's on a center ridge, and he's going to drop down and watch his feet disappear. And he's now in another trail going across, and now he's on the backside of this feature. Uh, whether the mound is what we believe that it is as far as the trail doing this uh, is a possible, is a very likely case. There is a possibility that it could be some sort of an effigy, but uh, there isn't enough evidence to know that for sure. <laughs> Amateurs well, back in the day he had multiple purposes, right? I mean, some of them were ceremonial sites, some of them just maybe a, a campsite, something like that. Is that true? Uh, I'm I'm not really very well informed on that, but uh, we know that in northeastern Iowa there are effigies, which seem to be more a ceremonial sort of a location. Warren County is the site of many mounds. Uh, they're east of Indianola, and that seems to have been a place where there may have been powwows formed. Oh. And people from a long ways away would come to those sites. Uh, they've all been, in the past uh, 150 years, uh, disturbed quite a lot by, by the people that have acquired the lands. That's what makes this another special place, that it's the unplowed area that has never been plowed that reveals buffalo wallows, burial mounds, and wagon trails still on the surface. And it's a very special place. Yeah, a wonderful piece of history to have here at Wesley Woods.